Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we've got a really interesting one for you, Lithium Bank Resources. As the name implies, this is a lithium focused company here in North America. On top of that, they just came out with some huge news in the month of September that we're gonna talk about in today's presentation. But before we do, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comments section below if you've heard of this company before, if you're currently holding shares, and what your outlook is on the lithium space in general over the next couple of years. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Lithium Bank Resources Corporation. Now, lithium stocks are definitely making headlines recently. There's a lot of attention from the investment community and really the general public in these type of stocks and the battery metals or EV focused exploration companies. Now, Lithium Bank is super interesting for a number of reasons we're gonna talk about in today's presentation, including some key developments that have just taken place for this organization. Now this is as of Monday, September 18th, midday. You can see they're currently trading at $1.30, up four cents per share, or about 3.2% on the TSX Venture, under the ticker symbol LBNK. And if we pull up a six month chart on Lithium Bank, you can see they've been trading relatively flat with essentially the same share price back on March 31st of this year. Now, if we zoom out to a one year, you can see they're definitely building some momentum. And I think a lot of the catalysts that we're gonna discuss in today's presentation are really gonna illustrate why there's so much excitement around this company. Now to kick things off, I wanted to jump over to the company website. I'll leave this linked in the video description below. In the About Us section, you can see Lithium Bank Resources is a publicly traded lithium company focused on developing its two flagship projects, which are accurately named Boardwalk and Park Place in Western Canada. They also have some activity in Saskatchewan, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the presentation. You can see they hold approximately 2.5 million acres of brownfield lithium brine permits across three districts in Alberta and Saskatchewan as I just mentioned and in May of this year Lithium Bank completed an initial robust PEA or preliminary economic assessment of its boardwalk project which has a target of 31,350 TPA or tons per annum a net present value of approximately 2.8 billion dollars US and an IRR or internal rate of return of approximately 21.6% so the numbers are definitely looking good and you can see the company is continuing to de-risk its assets through detailed geological modeling and advanced engineering or really building out the view or picture of what they have at these locations. Now in the intro I mentioned that there's been some big developments just recently for Lithium Bank. We're going to talk about this development throughout today's presentation but I quickly wanted to take a look at a press release that actually just came out on September 11th of this year. It's titled Lithium Bank announces intellectual property license agreement agreements with G2L Greenview Resources for their direct lithium extraction technology, also known as DLE in the industry. We've talked about this with a number of the other companies we've covered on the channel, along with pilot plant testing and commercialization. Now as we continue to scroll down, you can see that this is an intellectual property license agreement. It was signed on September 8th. And under the highlights here, you can see that this preliminary testing indicates that this licensed technology will reduce the operating costs of Boardwalk DLE circuit by increasing their lithium recovery and selectivity, which in turn is going to reduce the reagent costs and improve the lithium concentration. Now G2L is going to ship their pilot plant with throughput capacity of about 8 to 10,000 liters per day to Alberta. That's going to be coming up next month, so in October of this year and they can then assess the scalability of this licensed technology under real world operating conditions. Now in consideration for this license, Lithium Bank is gonna issue up to 14 million common shares to G2L, and they then go on to talk about some of the additional benefits and cost synergies that are gonna be presented by this licensing agreement. And as mentioned, we're gonna refer back to some of the highlights here and some of the impacts on Lithium Bank throughout today's presentation. Now with that being said, and really a perfect segue to their technology section of the corporate website, you can see they again give highlights of this agreement 
with G2L, which is actually a 50-50 joint venture between Computational Geosciences, or CGI, and Clean Tech Water, and then talk about some of the benefits that we just discussed on the previous slide. And I should note that they're going to be creating an updated PEA or preliminary economic assessment at the boardwalk location that's going to include test work using this technology that's expected to come out or be released in the final quarter of this year. And this is actually a cool little visual or 3D render of that pilot plant that's going to be shipped to Alberta next month. So moving on through the presentation here, we're now going to jump into the investor deck and I wanted to call out this investment highlight slide. I love it when companies put these at the front of their presentation because it really helps me visualize the catalyst for the organization. So the big five for Lithium Bank, number one, the control of those three district scale lithium brine projects, which we referred to in the intro, both in Alberta and Saskatchewan, that together cover around 2.4 million acres. That PEA of their boardwalk location in Alberta here that supports 31,000 tons per annum. With that impressive net present value and internal rate of return, which we mentioned, the park place location and some of the impressive brine concentration results that they're seeing there, the partnership with G2L, which we just talked about for that DLE or direct lithium extraction technology, and the leadership team, which we're going to look at at the tail end of today's presentation, led by a CEO and executive chairman partnership, who together have sold seven public companies over the last two decades. Now for any of these exploration stage companies, it really does come down to the assets that they have within their portfolio. So I wanted to spend some time talking about these three properties. Again, district scale projects here you guys, with the potential to deliver meaningful amounts of lithium to the North American economy. So again, Boardwalk, Park Place, and Saskatchewan. I was a huge fan of Monopoly growing up, so I absolutely love the names of these locations. Now in Alberta, you can see Boardwalk and Park Place are just to the northwest of Edmonton, which is the capital of this province. And in Saskatchewan, all of the three locations are located south of Saskatoon. Now we're going to touch on each one of these locations in detail next up, but before we do, I quickly wanted to look at the timeline associated with each one of these locations. So they're simultaneously advancing all three of these district scale projects. And from an investment standpoint, there's a number of near-term catalysts on the horizon at each location. So looking at the current quarter here, Q3 of this year, they announced their transaction with Pristine Lithium in Saskatchewan. Q4, you've got the updated PEA coming out at Boardwalk, which we talked about, and the resource estimate at Park Place here in Alberta. The first half of next year has a number of big ones on the schedule. So that pilot plant, brine testing is gonna take place in Q1. They've got their PEA at Park Place and the anticipated closing of that pristine lithium deal in Saskatchewan. In the back half of next year, you've got the pre-feasibility study and permitting at Boardwalk and the G2L pilot plant brine testing at the other location in Alberta, which is Park Place. And then early 2025, that's when you're really gonna have that decision around construction at Boardwalk and the pre-feasibility study at Park Place. So essentially Park Place is one step behind Boardwalk within the development process. So at the Boardwalk location, you've got a map of the asset here. You have the PEA or at least the initial PEA which was released back in May of this year. Interesting fact, this was actually Canada's first indicated lithium brine resource, and it's got indicated levels in the neighborhood of about 71.6 milligrams per liter lithium, and inferred concentrations of about 68.0 milligrams per liter lithium. Now they've got multiple pads at this location with each well producing about 5,000 cubic meters per day, and the high flow brine found at this location has the potential production zone in the neighborhood of about 20 years. And this is the location where Lithium Bank and G2L have actually signed that exclusive license agreement. Now at the Park Place Alberta location, the hydrogeological study was completed in Q1 of this year. And what's interesting about this property is it actually has the largest contiguous lithium rich brine project by volume in North America and represents just about 1.6 million acres in terms of size. Now the brine concentrations, at least from the samples assayed at this location, are anywhere from 76 to 130 milligrams per liter lithium. And Park Place is unique in the sense of its hydraulic connectivity between the Leduc and Swan Hill formations, again representing that continuous resource volume. Plus, they're able to fast track the development at this location based on the PEA and the work that's being done at Boardwalk. 
Now last but not least are their three key properties or locations in Saskatchewan which are Kindersley, Estevan and their south property with the corresponding size or acres on the right here. And as I mentioned a few slides ago, on July 31st of this year, Lithium Bank entered into a definitive asset purchase agreement with Pristine Lithium Corp, which is where they got all three of these locations found in Saskatchewan. And you can see some of the details of the transaction listed below. So now that we've talked about Lithium Bank's business model, their partnerships, and some of their assets, I wanted to do a comparison of some of the other direct brine lithium exploration companies we've talked about on the channel. So up top, you can see Lithium Bank here, again on the TSX Venture under the ticker LBNK. You've got E3 Lithium, which we've covered on the channel as well, and Standard Lithium, which is really one of the biggest players in this space. Now the various different colors on this bar chart indicate market cap, resources under their PEA or PFS, and then in blue are the actual resources associated with each one of these organizations. So in the case of Lithium Bank, although their resources are actually comparable with E3, far surpassing standard lithium, and the resources under their PEA are far superior, their market cap is only a fraction of what these other players are achieving in the market. So I definitely think that could present a unique opportunity for anyone looking for exposure to the lithium exploration sector here in North America. And on the right, you can see the stage at which each one of these companies is at, again, consistent between the group with that direct brine PEA. Now, one of the reasons for that smaller market cap may be the fact that Lithium Bank is slightly behind in terms of the development stages at these locations. So if you look at E3 Lithium, they're in their DLE piloting stage. Standard Lithium is at their commercial demonstration of the plant itself. Whereas with Lithium Bank, you can see even at their most advanced location, which again is Boardwalk, they're at the PEA or Preliminary Economic Assessment stage. So again, the potential to get in one of these lithium exploration companies slightly earlier, or at least at an earlier stage in their development cycle. And when we think about catalysts on the horizon for this company, you can see there's a long list of steps that could represent catalysts for the organization and in turn the share price. Now I promised before I let you go, we'd take a look at the leadership team here. And it's really this partnership between Paul and Rob that I referred to a couple of slides ago where they've actually sold seven companies between the two of them in the last 20 years. So I'm not gonna read through all of their credentials and background, but I would definitely encourage you guys to go in and take a closer look at this dynamic duo. They've been around the block, they know what they're doing. And as you can see in the credentials here, there's a long list of companies and the corresponding shareholders that have seen a lot of success from this team's accomplishments. So for those reasons, you guys, and the ones outlined here below, I definitely think Lithium Bank Resources may be worth a closer look if you're looking for exposure to the Canadian lithium brine sector. This company is really starting to grab some attention in the industry and I really think they're just scratching the surface in terms of some of these future catalysts on the roadmap. I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts about Lithium Bank in the comments section below, particularly if you're already holding shares, how you think they stack up to some of the other players in this sector, and your outlook on the Lithium space as a whole over the next couple of years. Now with that being said, thanks so much for watching you guys. If you're still here at this point, hopefully you found some value, so hit the like button. If you're not part of the community, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you. That's all for now. Have a great rest of your day.